Hello YouTube, Computer Good 1416 here, coming to you from a little bit different place this time, my bed actually. Just because my cam new camera is too heavy for my tripod, so it doesn't like when I point it at the ground, so this way I can have a little bit of elevation. But anyway, enough about that. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pixel 3a XL that I've had almost three weeks now, so I thought it's time to go ahead and review it. In short, I would recommend this phone any day to someone who's looking for a well-rounded Android phone. This is, for the price, this thing is amazing, but anyway, let's of course go into more detail on that. So, first of all, talk, let's talk a little bit about the different models. So, this is the 3A XL, which is 6 inches. The regular 3A, which looks very similar, but it's just smaller, it's 5.5 inches. It's also $80 cheaper. Um, this is $479. The regular 3A is $399. I personally think the XL is worth the $80. Not only is it bigger, but it also has a bigger battery. So, you, I would re highly recommend that model. You can also get it through carriers, which is nice, at, at, other than just the regular unlocked route. So, if you don't want to pay the $480 up front, you can you can get it subsidized through your carrier. Um, AT&T, for whatever reason, is the exception to that. They don't sell it, but... Or you can also get it through Google financed as well, so that's really nice. But anyway, let's take a look at the hardware. Um, so for the overall design, it's plastic, but honestly, really doesn't matter that much. Especially if you have a case on it, like I do, I've got a clear case on it right now. You really can't tell that it's plastic, it really doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. The display, as I mentioned, is a 6 inch 1080p OLED display, which let me turn the screen on just for a minute so you can see that. Yeah, really, really incredible screen quality, as you can tell. I'm used to the Moto G series, is what I came from, so I'm used to LCD. So, to have an OLED display on a price in this range is really, really good. So, I'm glad Google went with that. It's also got a always-on display, which I currently have disabled, but basically, you know, like you've seen, where you have the time and then minimal notifications, so... That's kind of nice if you use your phone, like if you put your phone like a dock or something and you want to be able to just glance at it from time to time, it's that's kind of nice. That's one advantage of a OLED display. Um, so let's take a look at some of the more, some of the horror features. We got an 8 megapixel front camera here, which, not wide angle, but really, I don't care. I don't take front camera pictures much, so, anyway. Got dual speakers, one of the speakers being that, and then the other is on the bottom. Kind of a weird choice. I would have preferred the bottom speaker to be in this bezel down here, but, you know, it's whatever. At least there's one up here, so if you happen to be blocking this, then at least you still have that one. Um, you might, one thing you might notice is that it does have a bigger bezel than most phones. You know, that's no notch or all-screen display like most phones do. Sorry, I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. Yeah, you might notice the bezels are a little more traditional than you see nowadays, but you know what? I kind of like that personally. I, I'm not a fan of the notch like most people aren't. I think if you're going to do an all-screen display, what you should do like the Samsung Galaxy does where you have a cutout in the corner, and I think the Pixel 4 is supposed to have that as well. Or, preferably, would be like the OnePlus 7 where you have a pop-out camera. Alright, so on the bottom here we got a USB-C port which does support fast charging, supports 18 watt fa fast charging, which is really, really nice. Um, does have a headphone jack on the top, which thank you Google for bringing that back. Don't hold your breath for them to keep it on the Pixel 4, but they said it was specifically because of this price range. You know, they, they figure that people that in this price range might use wired headphones more. So, you know, either way, I'm glad they brought that back. On the left side here, we got a, it's hard to see, but we got a SIM card slot. This does support eSIM, which is really nice uh, if you're on Project Fi or Sprint. On the right side, we've got volume rocker and power button. On the back, we've got the fingerprint sensor, which I like being on the back. I think it's more of a very natural position. You know, when you're holding the phone you like this, you can just kind of, kind of, your finger kind of naturally rests there. We've got a 12.2 megapixel camera, which is only a single lens, but don't let that fool you because this phone has an amazing camera. It's actually the same one that's in the regular Pixel 3 XL. So, and that's because Google uses software for a lot of their processing, so really, really cool to see that in this price point. And here you're looking at some test shots that you can see really, really good for, again, for this, for being a mid, for being technically a mid-range phone. 
It's also got other features, of course, like night sight, time lapse. And then in terms of video, it shoots 4K at 30 frames a second. I'm not sure if I'm going to process this video in 4K or not to show it. Let's talk about a few of the specs. It's got a Snapdragon 7, so, sorry, six, Snapdragon 670 processor, which, you know, it's not the most powerful in the world. But again, I think that for most people, I don't think you, most people take advantage of an 800 series processor, to be honest with you. I think that for what I've done, what I use this phone for, you know, light gaming, social media, messaging, you know, that kind of thing. I, from what most people use a phone for, I don't think you really take advantage of the 800 series processor. I think that a 670 is actually pretty good. It's also got 4 gigs of RAM, which again, like I said, going back to the processor, I think that most people, 4 gigs is probably fine, especially since Android has really good memory management, so it will kill apps automatically that are taking up processing space. All right, for storage, this phone has 64 gigs on board, which that's the only available model. There's no 128 gig model, unfortunately. That would have been nice for them to do that, but for me at least, I don't use that much storage. You know, I, I don't have MP, use MP3s anymore, and I don't, you know, most of the photos I do take, I end up backing up to my computer, so, and they also include free backup to Google Photos, so if you're worried about photo storage at least you shouldn't have to worry about that so you know again it would have been nice to see a 128 gig model but but you know it, it, it is what it is I guess um, so now let's before we get to software let's talk about what this phone doesn't have it does not have you know of course being 479 it can't have everything but in my opinion most of what they removed is justifiable um, there's no expandable storage which again you know is kinda going on the wayside they really you really don't see that much any day nowadays no water resistance or wireless charging. Again, I don't use those. You know, I'm very careful with my phones. I don't really drop them in the water ever, so I don't think I ever have actually. So that's not an issue for me personally. And wireless charging, you know, it does have NFC, however. So in my opinion, I think between the two, NFC and wireless charging, I find myself using NFC more often um, than I do wireless charging. So for me, at least, it's not a huge issue. Would have been nice to see it, but again, I think it has something to do with the fact that it's plastic, so again, not a huge deal. Alright guys, now let's get into the software end of things. So, of course, being a Google phone, you got stock Android 9.0 Pi, so really, really nice to see that. I've always been a big fan of stock Android, so it's nice to see, nice to see that. And, of course, it will get Android Q as soon as it comes out. I've thought about installing the beta, but honestly, I don't want any bugs or anything like that, so I just stick with Pi for now. So yeah, I mean, that's that, that's the reason you get a Pixel, in my opinion, is for stock Android. And and yeah, it really doesn't disappoint with that. Stock Android is, is as smooth and lightweight as it could be. They do have some gesture features added onto it. Like, there's a feature that they had where you can squeeze to activate Google Assistant. And also, there's a swipe down on the fingerprint sensor to pull down your notification bar. I disabled those. I found them to be a little gimmicky, to be honest. But, you know, if you like those features, then there you go. It also had a feature where you can, if the phone is ringing and you forgot to silence it and you want to silence it real quick, you can do like that, and it will quickly silence it. I disabled that as well, but, again, if you like that, it's there, I guess. Oh, sorry, I moved the tripod there. So let's talk about something that most people don't talk about nowadays, but it's, you know, it's a cell phone, so obviously it's important. It's call quality. And call quality on this phone seems to be pretty good. People can hear me really well, even on speakerphone, and vice versa. I can hear them very well as well. And it does support Wi-Fi calling, which is nice because at my house is kind of a dead spot for Sprint, so Wi-Fi calling is really handy to have. All right, guys. So moving on, you guys know, as you guys probably know, I'm not the kind of reviewer to be like, let's compare this to this phone. Let's show how fast it is. Let's show off this video playing. I'm not that kind of reviewer. I think. Some of those things can get a little technical. I think that really what you guys care about is more the day-to-day -day practical stuff. You know, will this phone be good for you? So, with that being said, I'm not going to show off everything. But one thing I will show off is gaming. Because I feel like that's important to a lot of people. So, let's try Asphalt 9. And to show that the, the 670 processor along with the Adreno 615 GPU seem to do a pretty good job for what it is. 
and I'd say Asphalt 9 is, you know, not the heaviest game maybe, but it's a fairly intensive game, so this will give you a good idea of what the performance is like. Alright guys, here's the game going. I, did, I muted the sound just because I, I didn't know if any of the songs were copyrighted or not. But anyway, yeah, as so you can see, it runs pretty well with no lag or anything like that. And the camera may not be giving the screen the best feel for the quality. I, I did check, and the white balance seems to be the best it can be. But again, it may not be as good on camera. So, yeah, but I mean, it runs really smoothly, as you can see. I'm not having any lag or anything. So, like I said, the for being a, quote, mid-range processor, it seems to be handling the job pretty well. Alright, there we go. That was just a quick little lap there to show you guys the gaming performance. Alright, so what now? So, let's go into settings and I'll show you guys some stuff in there. Alright, so we're in the settings menu now, so let me show you some couple things in here. Starting off with the battery life, which... As I kind of, as I may have mentioned earlier, the batteries differ between the two models. The 3A, the regular 3A, has a 3430 processor, or processor, battery, you know what I mean, 3430 milliamp battery. Whereas the bigger one has 3700 milliamp, so that may be a reason alone to go for the bigger model. And let me tell you guys, this phone has an amazing battery life. I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in summer break right now, I'm not taking any classes or anything, so I'm not using this phone as much as I usually would. But, still, I can get about a day and a half to two days out of this phone, no, no joke. So this, this, this battery life is incredible. And part of that is because... Android P introduced a adaptive battery feature where you can it'll decide what you're not using in the background and shut it down to save battery so and I'm curious when Android Q comes out if the dark mode will help with the battery because this is an OLED screen so we'll see about that but even now you can see 81% it's been on 55 minutes of on screen time so I can get about between 4 and 5 hours of on screen time with this battery this is like I said, really, really great battery. Good job on Google for doing that. And again, it does support turbocharging 18 watts. So if it ever runs out, then it's not hard to get it back up real quick. You can see it also gives you, let me go into more detail here. Yep, you can see, so I got a charger five hours ago. And, you know, it says I got estimated a day and three hours left. And that's probably not inaccurate either. That sounds about right. So, anyway, that's it for the battery. One more thing I wanted to show off in the settings is a lot of people are having issues with the digital well-being feature, which is basically a new feature that allows you to monitor your app usage. A lot of people were complaining that it was affecting their battery life. So if you're, uh, they may have fixed that in the, the newest, the June update. But if they, just in case some people are still having the issue, let me show you guys how you can fix it. You got a digital well-being. Go up here to the top. Turn. The, Yours would say turn off usage access. Your digital well being. Oh, wrong thing. And you turn off the usage access. So, anyway, just I know it's kind of random. I just thought I'd show you guys that. But anyway, yeah. So, would I recommend this phone to you guys? I think if you're an, an, you're an average Android user that doesn't need anything fancy, just needs the basics, and especially if you're a big fan of. If you like stock Android like I do, then you can't get any better than this, I think. For the money, I think, especially when you compare it to some other mid-range devices like the Moto G series, this is really, you're getting a lot for the money, and honestly, I think it's just fine for most people. Now, obviously, if you're coming from a flagship and you're happy with it, then you may want to go with something else, like a Samsung Galaxy, OnePlus 7, or maybe even wait on the Pixel 4 to come out. But for me at least, I'm a fairly average to minimal phone user and I've been very impressed with this device so far. I'd highly recommend it to anyone who's the same way. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and stay tuned for some test footage. Alright, I'm filming some test footage in 4K, 30 frames a second. It's a fairly overcast day to give you an idea of what the situation is out here. It's actually the first device I've ever had capable of 4K, so that's kind of neat. Not that I'll ever use it that much, but it's cool. Cool, could I have anyway. Assuming my main computer can handle the rendering, which I'm pretty sure it can, I will be rendering this video in 4K as well, so you can get an idea of what the footage really looks like. So yeah, pretty neat. Let me switch to 1080p. 
Alright, now we're in 1080p, 60 frames a second. Which is probably more realistic, honestly. But 4K is still neat nonetheless. Let's test the digital zoom. Uh, blurry is expected, but that's again it's to be expected with a digital zoom. But yeah, let me know what you think, and thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.